Hello and welcome back to the Canapa News Network. Tonight's latest story, Lupin's latest season, is airing a month early in Italy. Penguin buddy, pack your bags because we're going to Italy. Lupin the Third, L'Aventura Italiana, or The Italian Adventure, is an adventure comedy series as part of the highly prestigious classic Lupin the Third franchise. The series is produced by TMS Entertainment, known for their work on the original series, Detective Conan, and more recently, Jitsu wa Watashi wa. But without further ado, it is my pleasure to present the Vital 3 review of Lupin the Third, L'Aventura Italiana. Lupin the Third is an incredibly iconic series within the anime space and along with Detective Conan is one of TMS Entertainment's most valuable properties. With this series' third film being directed by Hayao Miyazaki and Takeshi Koike having been involved within the previous series, The Woman Called Fujike Mina, and then going on to direct a Lupin film himself, this franchise is one that exists based on its legacy, while still being accessible to any newcomers. So despite this being the fifth Lupin series, it still works as an entry point into the series with its completely independent story. In this iteration, the master thief Lupin is getting married and settling down with his new wife in San Marino. Well, for about five minutes, until we break out into a classic Lupin heist scene as classic fans squeal with joy. Yes, stylistically Lupin is within a genre of its own, and it stands tall as one of anime's great action comedies. Running about on rooftops, ridiculous disguises, silly cartoon-esque moments, it's something that is truly unique to this sort of series, and it's effectively capable of placing itself within its own standard stylistically. We'll jump into these heights, have these ridiculously over-the-top confrontations, and then have it all revealed to us through brief exposition as if it were a Scooby-Doo cartoon. Re-adopting its own episodic formula, we are presented with a new case each episode, each with a smaller but significant continuous plotline that attempts to deliver something on a larger scale in contrast. With this series debuting in Italy of all places, they've clearly tried to appeal to the core Italian audience, with plots based on these sort of moments involving the Mafia and local landmarks. Lupin even goes so far as to say, hey, we know you guys love soccer here in Italy, so next episode will be all about that. But rather than appearing clingy or desperate, it's just lovably cheesy, which honestly sums up the whole franchise to be honest. It's the same formula from the 70s, but that's by no means a bad thing, as it builds upon this with new experiences. Of course, the fact that we haven't gotten a main series Lupin anime since the 80s probably helps as well. Lupin as a character is fairly irregular. Whilst in the original manga he was seen to be remorseless, cocky and crude, the anime has converted him into a somewhat more likeable character who varies in terms of whether he's an outright bad guy or just a simple womanising master thief who enjoys the thrill of the heist. 
and Laventura goes even further in this direction, presenting Lupin once again as a character who loves the thrill of the heist, but maybe is a little more mature about it. Well, I did say a little. The point is, Laventura Italiana feels like a more mature Lupin, and maybe I'm just obsessed with the fact that his new jacket colour is blue, traditionally regarded as the karma colour, but there certainly is something about him now that feels more sensible. And of course the typical gang is here too, with Daisuke Jigen being almost too reliable for his own good, Goemon Ishikawa being the incredibly talented samurai who uses his skills to aid Lupin in his thievery, and Fujiko Mina, the wild card, who is constantly able to trick Lupin to turn a heist in her favour. And these roles have not changed at all. If anything, they're more cemented than they ever were after all this time, and whilst interactions may play out as being routine, they hold an undeniable charm and wit to them. Each and every time Lupin falls for Fujiko, or Goemon gets annoyed with Lupin. But there's a new entry into the ranks here, and she's a wild card in her own right. It's Lupin's very own wife. Rebecca, who makes her debut into the series as an opposing master thief who can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Lupin. As a new strong female protagonist, she makes for a great watch, and her unlimited supply of money adds her own dynamic to each heist. My only issue is that, at the moment, she overlaps with Fujiko Mina as a rival master thief, and if she is to be a regular character within the franchise, as I predict that she will be, her place in it will need to evolve. Fun fact, the author of Lupin the Third, known as Monkey Punch, is currently 78 years old and has been a mangaka ever since 1962. But whilst he hasn't been particularly active since the 80s, his contributions live on, as we return from Takeshi Koike's unique take on Monkey Punch's designs, back into something based far more on the first season rather than the previous season 3 designs. And that's something that is carried on throughout, almost as an homage with classic character designs, beautiful background art with standout moments that truly reflects how amazing the art design really is. And this is combined with super consistent animation, combining classic sensibilities with modern talent, and it's certainly something special within this year of anime. I keep having to remind myself that we are talking about a seasonal anime here, and not a gem of the 1970s, because of this incredible attention to what we view as being classic Lupin, and it doesn't fall into the trap of trying to modernise him, beyond giving him a brand new laptop. But when it comes to the opening, as catchy as I may find it as someone who speaks a whole two words of Italian, I have been informed that both the lyrics and rapping are atrociously rubbish. What do you mean they don't do Tim Tams here? They're the best fucking chocolate biscuit in the world! Do you mean this is all I've got left? Fuck it. Penguin buddy, we're going back to Australia. All in all, it's a brand new Lupin series that is exciting in its own right, and it plays out as a brilliant homage to what we know as being Lupin the Third. Storylines are building, new characters have been introduced, yet our core cast and the ideals of the classics hold steadfast in the modern age, as it confidently employs the same stylistic techniques from 40 years ago to great success. It's a series that may very well get overlooked when it airs in Japan and on other Western platforms next month. The series is currently available to watch an Italia 1 for Italian viewers, with more details to come and where you can watch the Japanese broadcast in October. And of course, the verdict is continue watching. Thanks for watching The Canopy Effect. Special thanks to Prince Flannel for being the official Canopy News Network anchor, and thanks to Adverenity on Twitter for informing me how terrible the opening really is.